welcome to another edition of Roof Talk. Uh, 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 where I talk about metaphysical matters on top of my roof so I can better connect with the absolute. And I actually this has been a theory that I read somewhere that says that if you want to think more uh, freely and more creatively, it's better to go it's better to be outdoors or have really high ceilings. Anyway, so this video is going to be about the nature of consciousness and about the, our current state of technology and science and why this period uh, that we're living out right now is sort of important. It's sort of like a transition. It's a, it's, something's going down, I feel like, with um, the state of our, our world. And I just want to address it. I think that the world is becoming more mental. We're transcending. And that is all made possible by technology and science which are running parallel to each other and the computational power of, of technology is you know increasing exponentially if you hear me check out um, Ray Kurzweil's book the singularity is near uh, well obviously not everything he predicts is gonna come to fruition but it's a it's a good book it's good food for thought to understand where we're going at this point of history. This period has been called like something like the period of the brain or like the uh, sort of like the phase in our history of science and technology where we are really beginning to probe the, uh, the brain. We're looking at the brain deeper than ever before to, um, to really get deeper into the nature of consciousness. And if you look at consciousness, it really is the last frontier of science. You know, we know everything about the universe. We can study matter. We can study, we can, you know, measure all these things we see around us. The last thing that we can understand is consciousness. And I think um, with the uh, increase, increasing power of technology, we can finally, you know, we're unraveling genetics and we're looking into the brain. And I think if you're not, like, on this thing, if you're not, like, catching up with what's going on in brain science and about you know the latest study in consciousness and perception and all that stuff just the nature of your mind there's so many new stuff that's coming out there's so many new technologies that are allowing the world to become more mental and, and, and we're transcending and if you look at all those movies are there are a lot of movies out there that's coming up out of Hollywood that deals with this matter uh, I'll give you some examples. And Her, the movie Her, if you haven't checked that out, it's one of my favorite movies this year. And uh, the movie Transcendence, and Lucy, and Interstellar, all these movies are, movies are dealing with stuff that, they're science fiction movies. But unlike the science fiction movies of the past, where they talk about things that could never happen, or like they won't happen for another like 200,000 years, which probably not, not, not going to happen anyway, because predictions is too far into the future to be true, those movies are actually talking about something that is about to happen. If you look at her, the movie about you falling in love with the OS and the fact that at the end of both her and Lucy, they transcended to, uh, to become one with the absolute. And I think that really is sort of where the direction of our species. If you look at old religions and all the mythologies and all over the world, really the human, human beings as, as, a, as a whole, our species goal is really just to sort of transcend or sort of leave matter behind, leave the body behind and, and be, to be disembodied. And if you're not trying to do that, like at, the, at a personal level, you're sort of missing out. And especially coupled with the fact, as I mentioned, that we are in the point of history where we know more about the brain, more about the nature of consciousness than ever before. If you're not, you know, catching up to, you know, what really is going on, if you're not exploring your mind, if you're not, you know, updating your consciousness, spending, then you're missing out on something huge and profound here. And if you just look at the internet, I think internet is just probably the most best example. If you look at the, the way we communi communicate on the internet or the way social media works, we're sort of really dissolving the boundaries. We're sort of really transcending. We're leaving our bodies behind. The way we communicate, the way we put up photos on Instagram, on Facebook, put up videos on YouTube, we are, in a way, connecting with each other, expressing ourselves without the limitation of geography, of, of space, and of time, right? And like, like I said, it's going to go up to a tra trajectory where we are one day going to transcend like in the movie Her and the movie Lucy where or the only thing that's going to be matter is our consciousness. Let me give you a few examples from the book Future of the Mind where he talks about some new technologies that's going on. Send a signal just by thinking about a movement. You can send that signal 
uh, to another person halfway across the world, and that person would kick his leg up. That's pretty scary. You can control another person's leg half around the world. And that's just uh, uh, rudimentary. Like in the future, we're going to have more abstract, instead of like a motor movement where it's more basic and more physical, we can have more abstract uh, transmissions. Like just thinking about a thought and your mom halfway across the world can pick it up. I mean, we are sort of doing that. Like I keep mentioning the fact that we are in this state where we are almost transcending. We're almost at the point of, you know, becoming completely abstract and mental, but not yet. That's why people are stuck on their screens. If you look at, look at how people like live nowadays, people are looking at their screens so much that it's almost like they're waiting in line to go inside the screen, but they can't, they can't yet. They have, they have the whole identity, the whole life on the screen, but it's there's still a space, there's still a, a, a division, a physical division between themselves and the screen. Right? There's still a screen here that I can't get through. Even though you're looking at my videos, you're, my, my, my ideas are being communicated, you're still looking at a flat dimensional, three, I mean two-dimensional space. I'm still not with you yet. Like in a way I'm with you, but once we go beyond that point, once we really truly transcend, once we go deeper into the level of singularity, you know, they're already doing that with the uh, with the 3D goggle, whatever it's called, the, the Rift or whatever. Like, I imagine in a few years, you're going to be wearing that goggle and watching my videos as if I'm there. And when that point comes and, and beyond, we're going to be communicating telepathically. We're going to be communicating in real time, in real space, with each other, without the limitation of our skull or our bodies. So in a, in a way, the, the, the world and social media and the, the lives we have on the internet, we are already starting to upload our consciousness, our minds. We're uploading pieces of our minds onto the internet. It's you know, not even just, I'm talking about everybody that's involved in, in social media or via Facebook. I'm not just talking about like people like me that make YouTube videos. I'm talking about everybody. You know, you're, on a daily basis, you're uploading pieces of yourself into the cyberspace. And if you look at the cyberspace, it really, the internet is really the collective subconscious. The internet is the collective mind. And we're emerging, everyone is emerged into that quote unquote absolute. Be one with the universal, be one to know the mind of God. And the, if the internet is the collective, collective mind, the internet is, the, the, it is literally the mind of God. I mean, just uh, literally, you, if you have an iPhone right now and you hold it in your hand, you have the whole world's knowledge at your fingertip. How do you feel about that? Right? And you're, if you're not contributing, like I say, if you're not contributing to increase the level of creativity as a, as a human species by, you know, exchanging ideas through this new medium, um, through all the different mediums of the internet, then you're missing out. Again, you're missing out on something profound and, and you, you, you should, you should start, you know? And it, yeah, I guess this video is just kind of like to encourage people, encourage you guys to get on with it. You know, because like something's going to go down pretty soon. And I feel like in 10, 20 years, this world is going to be completely different. And um, this is a quote, I forgot who, who said this, but he said that the, the future of the, the world, the empires of the world will be the empires of the mind. Basically what it means is that if you, if you can fine tune and you can... Um, upgrade and you can uh, make those mental gains transforming keep going up on your level of consciousness your level of thinking your level of, of your mental apparatus you're gonna be you're gonna be uh yeah emperors just look at look at art um i feel like anybody can be an artist nowadays if you have the creativity you know it's not about the equipments anymore because anyone with an iphone anyone with a gopro everything's leveling up you can see beyonce just made a new video with her gopro and um if you look at like what artists are doing today, what celebrities are doing today, you know, they, they're not looking for physical record sales anymore. They're looking at YouTube views, right? They're looking at how many likes they have on Facebook. Platform is getting to be, it's, it's a sign that we're converging, we're converging. If you don't be a better artist nowadays, it's, you gotta train your mind instead of just looking at catalogs of the latest equipment. Or, I mean, it still matters to a, to a certain extent, right? But I'm just saying that it's less and less about the physical matter. And in the future, the world is going to have less and less secrets. If you're, in a, if you're having an affair, you're going to leave a trace on the internet. If you have a thought, it's going to leave a trace on the internet. And if people are like, no, that's going to be crazy. People are, are, are going to read my mind and that's going to be insane. I, I believe that there's a certain part of you that should always be guarded. And I'm sure like when the technology reaches a point where you could literally read every thought inside a person's mind. There's going to be laws that are going to protect people's uh, mental privacy. But I'm just saying, 
literally we are becoming more and more open with each other, aren't we? Like, like okay, let me give you an example. Like in the Victorian times, or like back, like two hundred years ago, if you start talking about sex and you talk about talk to your friends about like who you fucked and all that shit, or just like, sort of speak your mind, anything that is quote unquote taboo, people think you're like they're look they, they, they were they were gonna banish you from from your village and shit, you know, like that. But like nowadays, it's just like we're much more open minded. We're much more open with each other. And it's not gonna surprise me that, you know, down the road in 20, 30 years, you're gonna see a person on the street and boom, this is gonna be like a screen that pops out in front of her or like you can just detect her thoughts in real time. And before you even meet the person, you have a pretty good idea. I mean, again, like I said, I can't emphasize this now, but you're already kind of doing that, like half-assed. Before you meet a person, you go and you stalk them on Instagram, you stalk them on Facebook, and sort of get a pretty good feel on what this person's like before you meet that person. And I believe in the future, this is gonna be even more of a realism. And our dreams and our subconscious fears, all that, all that stuff is gonna be out there in the open. And the last point I want to make is, I guess, it has to do with psychedelics. I mean, if you look at psychedelics, it's basically the uh, one of the ultimate tools to explore your consciousness, right? We're at 2014, going up to 2015. I think we're going on a psychedelic renaissance uh, with uh, websites like Silk Road and various black markets. People can order ayahuasca on the internet again we're going back to the internet the internet's connecting connecting everything you can order mind altering drugs that transport you to another reality on the internet and people are getting getting more and more educated about the nature of those psychedelic plants like in the 60s when people were taking lsd the reason why it got shut down the reason why all those drugs became illegal is because people were doing it wrong they weren't informed and i feel like going along with the exponential growth in technology and the internet and scientific research we are understanding more and more about not just the nature of our mind but the tools that allow us to explore our minds and, and i feel like with the rave culture and with the fact like i said like you can now order fucking dmt on the internet we are even though we live in the freaking modern time in this you know very uh artificial world we're in some of in a way a part of us is going back Right, we're taking mushrooms and smoking DMT, going through that ritual. It's almost like going back to Mother Nature. It's going back to where we come from.